From WCIB, this is ABC News 4, now at high definition. Good morning, Charleston. It's 5 a.m. on a Friday, December 9th. I'm John Bruce. So excited, and I'm Laura Harris. We have lots to get to this morning from overnight, but we'll start with our very own Sonia Stevens in the Weather Center for Dave this morning. Another very chilly start this morning, Sonia. Need the gloves. Yeah, <laughs> folks definitely going to need to bundle up the hat, the gloves, the scarf, all of that needed as you head out the door this morning. As the kiddos are waiting on the school bus, well, they can plan on temperatures generally in the middle 30s. A select few of us are in the 40s, most of us in the 30s. So yes, a cold morning, but a mild afternoon to look forward to. We'll be topping out in the lower 60s, so we'll call it a pleasant afternoon. Winds out of the north 5 to 10 miles per hour. Again, lower 60s, not too far away from our normal high for this time of year. Now tonight, middle 40s, not as chilly as the past couple of nights. And then tomorrow afternoon, lower 60s again. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds and let's see what's on the horizon as we head into the weekend. Well, small rain chances sticking around the next couple of days. Another cool down is coming this weekend and then we're seasonal by midweek. So several things to talk about in the seven day forecast. I'll have all those details coming up. John and Laura. All right, looking forward to it. Thank you, Sonia. And out of that fire frustration all new this morning. Yeah, we're hearing from a local business owner who says the overnight blaze at his store was no accident. He says firefighters were called out to Johnson's used auto parts on Highway 78 in Somerville right around midnight. We showed up a short time later and saw the fire damage to the front of the building. Ike Huntley has owned the auto parts store since 1996 and says crime has been picking up in the area. He thinks someone set the fire on purpose. We're still waiting on an official cause. What a terrifying moment this must have been. It's a crime alert all new this morning. Police tell us someone robbed the corner store at Sumner Avenue in North Charleston around 11 o'clock last night. We're learning the guy walked in with a gun, pointed it at a man inside and screamed at him to get down. That victim says the gunman tried to take a bank bag, but dropped it before he left. And a motorcycle rider wound up in the hospital after losing control of his bike this morning. The Highway Patrol says he was heading east near Highway 78 when he went off the road Around 1130 last night, no word yet on why he lost control of his Harley Davidson. We're told he was taken to the hospital and still waiting to hear how serious those injuries are. All right, well, two teenagers facing attempted murder charges are due in court later this morning. 17 year old Michael Anthony Brown Jr. and 18 year old Benjamin Antoine Green both face six charges after shooting on Hunters Ridge Lane in North Charleston. Police say three people were hurt when the suspects opened fire from a car Wednesday night. Everyone is expected to be okay. All right, well, Virginia Tech has descended into despair, forced to relive the nightmare from the April 2007 shooting rampage. The question is this morning, who is this newest gunman? Why did he open fire and how could this happen again? ABC's Scott Goldberg is following the story, making news across America. Virginia Tech students came together once again in grief. After a gunman murdered a police officer and apparently killed himself, they gathered at the Memorial for Students and Faculty killed on this same campus nearly five years ago in what remains the deadliest shooting rampage in U.S. history. This has happened not once but twice to a school that really just it, it doesn't doesn't deserve to happen to us. For several hours yesterday, police put Virginia Tech's campus on lockdown. It started just after noon when a campus police officer pulled over a car in a campus parking lot. Freshman Juliet Fielding saw it happen. They opened his car door and when they opened it, he just fell out towards the ground, sorry, and um, I could see his face and it was covered in blood. State troopers, FBI agents, and National Guardsmen joined campus police in the search. Eventually, they found a second right body. Police told everyone on campus, about 20,000 students, faculty, and staff on this day without classes, to stay inside and not to move. Armed officers stood guard. Do not leave this room until you're told, do you understand? Yes, sir. An alert system introduced after that 2007 shooting that killed 33 people sent out the first notice just six minutes after the shooting. A police officer has been shot. A potential second victim is reported. Stay indoors. A sharp contrast to four years ago when it took nearly two hours for the first alert to go out. Yesterday's alert ended when police identified the second dead man as the shooter. The officer killed yesterday was 39-year-old Derek Krause. He'd been on the Virginia Tech Police Force for four years. He was an Army veteran and a married father of five. Scott Goldberg, ABC News, Blacksburg, Virginia. 
Of course, our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone on the Virginia Tech That's campus. Sure. Rick Perry, he spent some time here in the Low Country yesterday trying to build up some ground in the Republican primary race. The Texas governor gave a speech on the Yorktown yesterday where he announced the formation of the Veterans for Perry Coalition. Governor Perry touts that he is the only presidential candidate who is a military veteran serving as a member of the U.S. Air Force from 1972 to 1977. When it comes to military funding, the question we must ask is not what we can afford to spend on our national defense, but what does it cost to keep America secure and safe? Perry wrapped up his South Carolina campaign tour with a walk down Buford's Main Street, followed by a town hall meeting in Okady, and then dinner in Greenville. Well, current Republican frontrunner Newt Gingrich was also in the Palmetto we'll State. He spoke jobs. at a business forum in Greenville and met with upstate business leaders. Gingrich is currently leading the pack of GOP hopefuls. He sits atop both polls here and in Iowa. Well, that Republican presidential candidate and the others have already met for nearly a dozen debates in this roller coaster nomination race. They've all played a more critical role than ever before. And the stakes, they couldn't be higher than they've ever been, right. you could say, for tomorrow night's Iowa debate. ABC's Karen Travers takes a look back at the highlights and the lowlights from this debate season and what to expect from the candidates on Saturday. If there's one lesson the learned States. so far in this Republican race, it's that debates really matter. The Republican debates have dominated this race to a greater extent than we've seen debates do in any previous contest. New frontrunner Newt Gingrich may have benefited the most from the robust schedule. Gingrich has skipped the usual barnstorming across Iowa and New Hampshire, but he burst to the top of the field almost entirely on the strength of his debate performances. And the correct thing in an act of war is to kill people who are trying to kill you. Romney stuck to his game plan of staying above the fray and focusing on President Obama. So far, it's worked. He survived a dozen showdowns with barely a scratch. But for other candidates, the debates have been their downfall. Uh, what's the third one there? Rick Perry enjoyed a brief stint at the top of the field, but was deeply bruised by his weak performances. The third agency of government, I would, I would do away with the education, uh, the uh, <laughs> I, I, commerce, and let's see, I can't. The third one, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. The debates put a spotlight on Herman Cain's no, thin that's, knowledge that's of foreign policy. It is unclear as to where we stand with Pakistan. It is unclear where we stand with Afghanistan. And for the second-tier candidates like Michelle Bachman, Rick Santorum, and John Huntsman, the debates have provided a far bigger platform than they would have had simply by campaigning. Tomorrow night's debate could be the last chance for a candidate to change the race before the Iowa caucuses. All eyes will be on Mitt Romney to see what he does to stop Newt Gingrich. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. And you can catch that debate right here on ABC News 4 tomorrow night starting at 9 o'clock. There you go. All right, going to be a lot of interesting stuff happening there. Well, there's a Cougar countdown happening. It's all about dealing with the stress those final exams. Everybody's dealing with stress. We're talking mini massages, puppies, and kids. Why is nobody doing all this for us? Seriously. It's what students at the College of Charleston are doing to chill out while exams are going on. They started yesterday and later today. Students get to eat free pancakes at Rivers Green with Come University on. President George Benson. Then Pet Helpers is also bringing some puppies out later today. Well, we did get to play with puppies yesterday. We did play with puppies, but that doesn't mean we haven't had the pancakes or the massages. We also had chocolate cake earlier this week. So noted. Not bad. All so right, still noted. to come this morning, the secret to a happy marriage. Aww. We're unlocking the age-old mystery. One hint, remember the little things. <laughs> and could the Coke recipe be out there for everyone to see? Why you could say the super secret is on display. Your pinpoint weather forecast with meteorologist Sonia Stevens. Good Friday morning, everyone. You're going to need to bundle up as you head out the door because it feels like 36 right now in Somerville. Feels like 37 in North Charleston. Currently in Mount Pleasant, feeling like 45, feels like 41 up in Georgetown. Let's check on the actual temperatures. Keep in mind the wind chill factors in the temperature along with the wind speed. So winds are obviously calm here in Mount Pleasant because the actual temperature is 45 and that's what it feels like. Same thing up in Georgetown feels like 40 or it is 45 <laughs> rather in Monk's Corner and 39 degrees in Walter Brown. We're seeing a lot of 30s and 40s across the Palmetto State. However, Augusta 
coming in at 28, so sitting several degrees below freezing. All of the southeast pretty much chilly this morning. 32 in Montgomery, 26 in Nashville, 34 up in Raleigh. As you head south, way south toward Miami, they're already very warm at 72 degrees. We're not even going to be that warm this afternoon. In fact, we're not even going to be that close to 72. So I'll show you the numbers for today. An improvement from yesterday, though. But we do have a fair amount of cloud cover across the southeast. Just really no rain to be found. But we do have a little coastal trough sitting offshore, and that could bring us a little bit of rain over the next couple of days. But high pressure mainly going to keep us dry today. A few more clouds than we saw yesterday. Again, a stray shower possible, but most of us probably going to stay dry. And the best chance for rain is going to be in our coastal counties. Then as we head into tomorrow, we get a second cold front. Behind this, a reinforcing shot of cold air. So the next two days, temperatures are going to be very close to normal. And then Saturday night into Sunday, that cold air moves in. And that means we're going to be below normal as we head into the second half of the weekend and the start of next week. And this area of high pressure is going to get parked across the northeast. We're going to have kind of what we call a wedge setting up. So a fair amount of cloud cover, slightly better chance of rain and below normal temperatures. But for this afternoon, I'm actually going to call it mild for this time of year. 63 in St. George and Monk's Corner, 62 in Somerville, about 60 along the coast. We're looking for a mix of sun and clouds. And then tonight we'll have partly cloudy skies, not as chilly as the past couple of nights. 42 in St. George, 43 in Monk's Corner, about 45 in North Charleston, 43 in Walter Burn along the coast are going to be running in the upper 40s. Here's the next seven days for you. Lower 60s today and tomorrow. Just a tiny 10% chance of rain. Slightly better rain chance Sunday into Monday. A little bit more cloud cover, but highs are going to be in the middle to upper 50s. 60s return as we head into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So feeling a, a fair amount like December, guys. Pretty decent weekend. I like for it. For December. Mm hmm. All right, well, you, you know Beyonce. She said it best. If you like it, then put a, put ring, a ring on, on it. Right? And we all want happiness, but sometimes it can just be so elusive. There you go. But married couples with children certainly know this. The stresses that come with the arrival of a baby are enormous. True. We feel unqualified to tell you about this story, but we're going to tell also you anyways. True. But a new study unlocks the mystery how to stay married and stay happy. We'll take notes. Here is ABC's <laughs> Dan Harris. People who don't have children often picture starting a family as being like father knows best. But in reality, it's often closer to parenthood. Which is why today's new report finds that 65% of us are less happy in our marriages after the arrival of a bundle of joy. However, the report also has some encouraging news. A sizable minority of married parents, about 35%, say they are very happy. And these couples, people like Sita and Robert Kennedy, we really enjoy all the, the richness and vibrancy of life, have secrets, secrets that any couple can steal. Secret number one, generosity. Should I be giving my wife lavish gifts? No, it's actually more kind of regular little things, like, you know, giving her a back rub at the end of a long day. And there are more secrets, modern ones, such as a healthy sex life, having date nights and sharing housework, and more traditional ones, like living within your means, which reduces stress, and having a shared religious belief, like the Kennedys. Speaking of the Kennedys, they have one more secret. Turns out parents with four or more children are the happiest. They have five. Boys. Our commitment to each other has deepened the more children that we have. And they say they are open to adding to their happiness. They're hoping for a girl. Bye. Dan Harris, ABC Bye. News, New York. Wow. Five kids. Five of them. Wow. Speaking of marriage, it's one proposal you may never have seen before, and it's the one the bride, well, she never saw it coming. <laughs> It's 521 now on your Friday. Arkansas famous Duggar family says they're heartbroken after losing their 20th child during pregnancy. Michelle Duggar told People Magazine she suffered a miscarriage. The family gained national attention as the stars of TLC's reality show 19 Kids and Counting. The 45-year-old mother tells People Magazine the family will name it and hold a funeral service. Yahoo has been awarded $610 million from damages in lottery scammers. Those schemers used Yahoo's name and logo to try and dupe people into believing they won a lottery they'd never even entered. Yahoo stands little chance of actually collecting money from Thai and Nigerian scammers. 
None of the defendants have responded to Yahoo's complaint. And we want to correct a story brought to you this time yesterday. It's regarding a policy change at the Diocese of Charleston. We told you that policy change would be assigned yesterday. It's actually happening on Monday. Our apologies, of course, for that error. Bishop Robert Gulligan-Mon expected to sign that updated policy concerning allegations of sexual misconduct of a minor by church personnel. We're told the revised policy introduces new rules for the way social media is used by church personnel. And for 86 years, Coca-Cola's secret formula has been locked inside a bank, but not anymore. The vault holding that formula is now on display inside the World of Coca-Cola Museum in Atlanta. This new exhibit opened to the public on Thursday. And check it out, it's designed to allow visitors to get as close as they possibly can to that legendary secret recipe. That formula is 125 years old in Laura Harris's favor. There you go. And it's in my hometown, so I like that too. Well, how about this? A popular holiday lights display in Oklahoma City turned into so much more for one couple. Amanda Taylor has their heartwarming story. For three years, this neighborhood has come together to put forward a bright side to Christmas. You know, we start in uh, the first week of November or even the week of, of Halloween starting to put up lights. What has started small. And we got the whole side of the block and then the other side of the block said, hey, hey, we want, we want to we want to play too. Has grown. More than 150,000 lights synced and blinking to music heard over the radio enjoyed by thousands. But on this chilly December night, the twinkling and dancing of the bulbs illuminate something special. A proposal between Chad Lester and Tiffany Burke and a sign asking for that special Christmas wish. I didn't know it was happening. I felt bad, bad blocking people's driveways. <laughs> I've never been more surprised in my life. She said yes, and what started out as a date to look at lights turned into so much more. It worked out perfect. I, I was really nervous. I didn't know if, it, if the timing and everything was going to work out, but it worked out perfectly. I thought of somebody else. <laughs> But and then I heard the song and then I knew it. <laughs> so under a glowing moon lit by thousands of lights, a special night comes to a close and another Christmas wish comes true. How about that? All I asked Santa for was an iPad too. Stay with us, more news coming up. Walmart is taking a serious hit out of the holiday competition. Details now as we follow America's Money. Good morning. Topping America's Money, mixed success at the European Summit. After late night talks, most but not all of the European Union members are agreeing to surrender some of their independence. Europe's chief banker says it's a good start. Walmart is having a jolly holiday season, and that's putting pressure on other major retailers. The world's largest retailer cites the return of the layaway plan for much of this year's success. And we're not driving as much. USA Today's analysis of government figures finds the number of miles we drove has declined every month since March. Experts say the major reasons are less employment, less money to spend, and higher gas prices. And Coca-Cola's secret formula is now being kept in a new location, an exhibit at the company's museum in Atlanta. Visitors can see the vault holding the 1886 recipe, but not the actual document itself. After all, it's a secret. And that's America's Money. I'm Sunny Hostin. Thanks, Sunny, and stay with us. We're running down your morning headlines all new at 530.